Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Nick here back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about XRP. I do have quite a bit of, you know, some XRP videos to really uh, upload and there is a lot of content with it. Uh, but I also do have some videos on Stack that I'm going to plan on uploading. Uh, this month is huge for Stack. If anybody is holding Stack, don't worry. I'm not leaving it out in you know the dark. Uh, we are going to be talking about it because it is a huge hold right now. I know a lot of people did buy into it and it's not really moving right now. But hey, it's still new. Uh, it's only like you know a little over a week or so new or two weeks now. Um, but I just want to say, you know, to anybody who did buy into it, trust me, we are very early and there is good things ahead. I will be talking about it as well as why I believe that it's very bullish. But nonetheless, I want to talk to you guys about this article from Ripple. Uh, hundreds of financial institutions across 55 plus countries worldwide agree. RippleNet offers a competitive edge with faster and cheaper remittances. Uh, read about their success stories here. And I do want to read about this because it's actually very interesting. So first off, we have uh, SCB. Uh, Thailand's oldest bank serves a wide range of customers, including individuals, small and medium businesses, and large enterprises. Our customers can send money to family and friends abroad in real time from their phones. Being part of RippleNet has helped us to completely enhance our com uh, customer experience, expand our business, and keep SCB moving into the future. We guys, you could pretty much read more and also watch the case study. Uh, and then we also have Neom forging new partnerships to offer doors in Southeast Asia. Neom is also providing easy, transparent, and affordable solutions for international payments. Uh, through Neom's use of Ripple in the Philippines and Mexico corridors, we have been able to eliminate pre-funding requirements and offer faster remittances at a lower cost. And then we also have Transfer Go down here. Uh, TransferGo, a UK-based international money service or uh, transfer service operating in 47 countries and 22 currencies, TransferGo offers instant low-cost global payments with help from Ripple. RippleNet has given us a competitive edge in India where we're making a real difference to people's lives by providing faster and cheaper remittances. We're also developing new relationships and expanding a new uh, expanding to new geographies so we can become a global real-time payment service and you guys could join the network and also read more use cases but overall I just want to say you know this is incredible I mean they have hundreds of financial institutions across 55 plus countries worldwide and we talked about this we talked about how big XRP is we talked about how big Ripple is but RippleNet is really bringing everything together and I think we're gonna see this pretty much be mass adopted very soon and I think the numbers that we're seeing with you know 55 plus countries or hundreds of financial institutions I think we're gonna see that grow even more uh, you know they do have named uh, companies here I don't know if I could personally see it yeah I can't see it but we could see a little bit here who runs on ripple uh, we have cross uh, currency cloud pound to wall uh, in uh, Indusside Bank, I don't know if I said that right, um, Tranglo, uh, SBI, Neom, Banco, uh, BTEC, I mean, Azimo, Lemonway, SCB, Santander, Lulu Exchange, and American Express. I mean, guys, it, it's honestly only a matter of time before we see XRP and Ripple be really mass adopted into the financial system. Uh, but I also want to talk to you guys a little bit about another article that came up. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty much just a tweet, but I thought this was pretty funny. It says, uh, Bitcoin mining now uses more electricity than Argentina. Mining for Bitcoin is now consuming more electricity than the entirety of Argentina suggests on an uh, energy tracker run by Cambridge University. And we also have another tweet similar to that with an article, actually. I'm going to open this and read it a little bit with you guys. But this is coming from Mac Attack XRP. Bitcoin's environmental impact is real issue, says Senator Elizabeth Warren. And honestly, it is. You know, even if we come over here to the uh, the green uh, carbon calculator on the XRP ledger, we could kind of see if we move a hundred million uh, transactions through Bitcoin, it uses 95.16 billion kilowatts an hour. Uh, Ethereum 4.29 billion. And then XRP at 790,000 
kilowatts an hour and that is less than cash at the end of the day now of course you know it's not less than visa or mastercard but it is still a small amount compared to most especially cash because we are beating cash in not only kilowatts an hour but even it down here we're beating it in co2 emissions uh, we're beating it in, in gas consumption as well and even if we come down here you could see the individual transactions as well through paper currency and we see kilowatt an hour 0 0.0079 i mean bitcoin's at 951 ethereum 42. now it also beats out cash like i said but this is the best part so the gallons of gas and you know the co2 emissions kilowatt an hour is great and all but the fees in terms of moving cash through you know xrp or you know comparing it to like cash or so is significantly cheaper as well we already learned that but overall i thought it was very interesting that xrp is also beating out cash and most you know crypto in the space uh now of course you know it is basically beating hbar but hbar is beating it in transactions per second but at the end of the day you know what hbar is doing and what you know xrp is doing is two different things like i mentioned i might make a video comparing the two because i think that that would actually be very interesting but overall i thought that was very cool to really see but nonetheless i do want to get back to this article with you know the senator elizabeth warren so she says uh here she called attention to bitcoin's environmental impact during her recent conversation with andy sewer the editor-in-chief of Yahoo Finance. I also think with Bitcoin and with other cryptocurrencies, I think there's a real issue about the environmental impact as well. This whole notion of how much energy is consumed just to keep the currency tracking going. Bitcoin's enormous energy consumption became a hot button issue in 2021 with New York lawmakers recently proposing a bill that would suspend mining for three years. Warren notes that bank deposits don't use that much energy, urging consumers to be more sensitive to their choices. And I think this is actually funny, though, uh, because bank deposits are garbage. To be completely honest with you guys, I deal with bank transfers all the time. They are garbage. To transfer money, to even move money, to deposit or anything, it sucks. First off, most of the time... A bank's not updated for three to five days or a bank's down. Uh, I know personally with my local bank, it goes down continuously. They're always doing maintenance. The ATM is not up. There's so many pain points that go into a bank that a lot of these people are not realizing. And now, of course, a lot of these people are very old in terms of what they see in the financial system. Uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren, at, <laughs> I think that she's in her 70s, I believe. Um, or she might be in her 60s. I, I didn't really look at her age overall. But a lot of these people are kind of outdated in the sense of, you know, the overall idea of, hey, here's a revolution that could be happening to, you know, the entire financial system. But we're not going to, in, you know, we're not going to implement it at all because, hey, it uses too much energy or this or that. Now, I don't agree with implementing Bitcoin into the financial system just because I don't like Bitcoin overall. Uh, I do like Bitcoin Cash in a sense that Bitcoin Cash is a lot more scalable. It's a lot cheaper and it's faster. But Bitcoin itself is more of like a store of value, as we see here, uh, in a sense that it's almost like digital gold. Now, Bitcoin Cash is almost like digital cash in a sense that you can move it easily and cheaper as well as, you know, a lot faster. Now, of course, Bitcoin Cash does not compete at all with XRP in a sense that it's not scalable in that way. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about this article as well. This is coming from Crypto Bull 2020. This is a, this says uh, Ripple ramps up sales of XRP. Says whales are quietly accumulating. Now we have seen we already seen the sales report. We already went over that. So I, I'm gonna save you guys uh, all that talk because this is just basically saying hey you know blah blah blah. But I want to say this. Ripple also reveals that whales quietly accumulated XRP during the first quarter of the year. The number of whale wallets defined as wallets with balances of at least 10 million XRP increased from 308 to 319, which of course that looks like it's nothing crazy, but at the end of the day, it's still a decent amount. And then we also have similarly, the number of wallets holding between 1 million and 10 million XRP increased from 100 or 1,125 to 1,196. 
the fintech company adds that XRP's on-chain activities are also on the up and up. And then we also have here with the ledger payment volume increasing. Last quarter, the number of active XRP ledger wallets increased as on-ledger activity grew. In quarter one, total on-ledger payment volume was $62.3 billion, representing a 23% increase quarter on quarter, while the number of total on-ledger wallet addresses increased 15% from 2.35 million to 2.7 million despite the trading suspension of xrp on some cryptocurrency exchanges during quarter four of last year following the U u.s securities and exchange commission lawsuit the fifth largest cryptocurrency by market cap saw new xrp pairs being added to exchanges around the world in the first quarter including the xrp usdc pair on hong kong based uh, qcoin exchange as well as the xrp slash sgd and xrp usd pairs on australia's independent reserve exchange so overall uh i thought this was actually a very interesting article just because you know we are seeing a lot more volume flow into xrp at the end of the day but it's also the idea that hey you know people know where this is going even at the low low end where it was at 17 cents you know i was accumulating i was buying at 17 cents i was buying at 25 cents i was buying at 35 cents you know i bought all the way up to about 50 cents after 50 cents i stopped buying now of course if I do pull profit from another coin or so, uh, it will go into XRP. And the reason why I'm not saying I'm going to, you know, accumulate more, you know, Hedera or anything like that is because I'm, I'm already accumulated enough on HBAR as well as a few other assets. Now, XRP, I want to hold as much XRP as I possibly can by also you know, of course, being diverse in terms of my portfolio, but I do want to hold a significant amount of XRP because I see a huge future for XRP and the potential that it has because I did my research. I know what I hold. And if anybody out there is still skeptical on what they hold, I would really gladly advise you to really do some research on it because what Ripple and XRP is doing and accomplishing is massive. But nonetheless, guys, uh, I just wanted to really do some quick updates on XRP and really get a video out for you guys uh, for today and really give you guys some more information in terms of XRP. But nonetheless, this has been Nick. If you guys do want more free knowledge, definitely join the Discord and also follow me on Twitter in the description below. Uh, and of course, if you guys do like this video, please leave a like and subscribe and turn notifications on. It helps the channel grow. It helps me help other people make money. And ultimately, it does kind of benefit me at the end of the day at some point in time when we do get the channel really growing. Um, now, of course, that's not my end goal or anything like that. I will still continue to, you know, help as many people as possible make money. Uh, of course, that's my end goal. That was my end goal with even making the Discord and my Twitter. So if you guys do, like I said, you know, wanna, want more help, want more, you know, information, want more knowledge. Uh, it's all free. Definitely uh, join the Discord and also follow me on Twitter. But nonetheless, guys, this has been Nick. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Peace out.